Nimeamka salama. Yes. Haya, karibuni. Tunangoja wengine waingie sababu tuko we are 17 at the moment. So let's just give some time for the others to join. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Just one or two minutes more. We are uh, 22. I can see people are still joining. So let's just give them a few minutes. And thank you for putting on your video. Those who can afford to leave their videos on, I would be grateful. I know some have a challenge with the net or data bundles. So if yeah. if you can afford if you are aware, you are using Wi-Fi, you can be generous enough to put your video on. It is yeah. more interesting when you are interacting with people you can see. So if you can put your video on, I really appreciate those who can afford to do so. So I think it is five minutes past eight. We can start off with the preliminaries. So good morning again. Good morning. Welcome to this lesson. Um, I think we can start off with a word of prayer. Uh, so can we have a volunteer? volunteer to pray for us. Volunteer. Kuomba tu. Maombi tu. Yes. Thank you, Mitch. Pray for us. Okay, let's pray. So, Father God, we come for this day. Um, we First of all, we want to pray that as we do the lesson, you be with us. Thank you for protecting us during the COVID-19, Father. And I pray that your grace may be upon us as we study. Give us knowledge and understanding and help us to have the zeal for learning, Father God. Father God, and it is in Jesus' great and much name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Mitch. So I'm happy to have all of you on board. For now, you can mute your microphones. You can mute them, then you will be unmuting when you want to speak. I'm happy to have you on board. Um, I'm going to lead the lesson today, and we are going to continue from where we left. Uh, the last time we were winding up, or we are on the last subtopic on uh, God, I mean the concept of God, spirits, and ancestors. So the last time we were here, we looked at the responsibilities of human beings to God, spirits, and ancestors. Then we left on a note, sorry, we left on a note where we were discussing 
the different forms of worship in the African society. And I remember we were not, other than mentioning, we were looking at each in detail because we were describing, we were describing uh, the various forms of worship. And you, you realize that under each, we were sort of asking what, how, when, okay? So that is the, the description that we were making. Maybe just to see whether you can recall what we discussed. Somebody just to give me one role of a human being to God. More there to one person to give one for God, one for ancestors, another one for spirit. Just one, one role. Because that's what we discussed last time. Uh, yes? yes? Somebody to remind us? Natumai mumeamuka vizuri. Kuna noo na wale wameamuka tu kutoka kwa blanket na wakaigia lesson. I'm happy. I'm happy that you can take the trouble. So, yes? Is there somebody? Lord. I'm a Lord. Yes? Any role that you can remember? Just one role or one responsibility of the human being towards God. Just one. Seth, were you there during the last lesson? Were you there? Seth, unmute yourself. Unikua? Did you attend? Okay, you have just arrived. Okay, somebody who was there. Please talk so that we proceed. Human beings have a responsibility to take care of creation. Yeah, they have a responsibility to take care of creation because as they take care of creation, they are taking care of God's uh, God, God created. Okay. That is the responsibility towards God or even spirit or ancestors. Okay, any other responsibility then just at random. Yes? Philemon, just one role. Or oh, you are the one who talked. Clinton, okay, I want you to smile up. David, I can see David's hand is up. Yes, David? Excuse me, teacher. What are you talking yes. about? I've just joined. What am I? What are you talking about? I've just joined. <laughs> I like that. Uh -huh. Uh, who is okay? Just ask your question again. What are you talking about? I have just joined. Okay, thank you very much. We were doing a recap of yes. what we discussed last time. Did you yes. attend last last week's lesson? Yes. Ah, very good. So we were. I just wanted you last time. We talked about. Sorry, I've I've, sw I've switched to the wrong place. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me get back. What have I done? <laughs> I'm focused. My camera had gone to my table instead of focusing on me. Now, we were just doing a recap last time. We talked about the responsibilities of the living towards God, spirits, and ancestors. And I just wanted you to mention, just as a recap, <coughs> what we said is the responsibilities of. Uh, the living towards God, spirits, and ancestors. Just any point which you can recall, either to God, ancestors, or spirits. Towards God, there yes. is worship, to worship Him, yes. obey Him, obey Him, yes. Yes. care for His creation, yes. teach their children about God. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Can you mention the role? Towards spirits or ancestors other than God? Towards David? spirits. Yes. Towards spirits, there is <laughs> respect them. Yes. There is uh, show concern for the sacred places, objects, and animals. Okay. There is also offering sacrifices to appease them. Okay, very good. Very good, David. Thank you. Uh, I saw Clinton, your hand was up. Clinton, contribute also. Unmute, oh, yes. To offer sacrifices and appease the spirits. And appease the spirits. Very good. Okay, thank you. 
So that is what we talked about, the responsibilities of believing towards God's spirit, I mean God's spirits and ancestors. Now, the other area we were looking at was to describe the traditional African ways of worshiping God. And we looked at two. We discussed two. One was which one? Victor, were you there? Victor Munene? No. You are not there. Welcome. David, your hand is up again. What did we say? We talked about two forms of worship. There is sacrifices. Yes. And uh, offerings. Okay. What did we say about them? Now the sacrifices. others talk because we say just anything. What did we say about sacrifices? Anything you can remember? Juvenalis. Juvenalis. Are you there? Can you hear me? Unmute. Okay, Victor, I can see your hand up. Yes, Victor? Yes. Fran? Yes. It, in, it involves yes? shedding of blood. It involves shedding of blood. Yes, what else? Somebody else. Sacrifices. Yes. When were they offered? When were sacrifices offered? Yes, David, again. David, your hand is up. Yes, sacrifices were offered during mm -hmm. planting, harvesting, yes. epidemics, mm -hmm. birth and naming ceremonies. Right. Okay, and okay, Come very on. good. And why were they offered? They were offered to ask yes. for God's favor, a peace, or thanking for his blessing. Okay, thank you very much. Now, offering, yes, uh, Clinton, your hand is up. Oh, they were used also to avert the evil spirits. Yes, the evil so when spirits. they, yeah, when there was evil in the land, they were doing, they were offering just to, to avert evil so that the evil does not continue. So in the traditional setup, that was like now we are suffering all that we are going through is uh, because of COVID-19, it, it is a misfortune, yeah, it is a pandemic. In the traditional society, several animals by now would be dead to try and appease uh, the God so that they do away or they avert or they, they intervene so that the misfortune does not progress. Very good. Then offering. What did we say is the main difference between an offering and a sacrifice? Munene hata kama ukuwa, Victor, you do know the difference between an offering and a sacrifice? Yes, right. A sacrifice? A sacrifice involves the shedding of blood, while an offering does not. It does not. So don't use not. What does it involve? In CRE, of course, we should avoid that or in answering questions, you, you, you say in the affirmative, this is this and this is that. So somebody to help. In, uh, in offerings, it mainly involves yeah. giving, yeah. Away. Yeah. giving off. Okay, somebody, it involves mainly the giving of foodstuffs. Okay, whether they are burnt or given, that is what it involves. Okay, very good. So today then, anybody with a question up to that point? Okay, I want to I continue welcoming all of those who have joined. We are now at 43. I hope the number will continue growing. So today, I want us to go to the other form of worship uh, in the African society. So uh, the next, write, write the following, prayers and invocations. Prayers and invocations. Prayers and invocations was another form of worship. Okay. Prayers and invocations. Now please mute those who are in the... Make sure you put, we are going, we are, or, uh, I, I don't want to mute, Philemon, Philemon, mute your microphone, Philemon, mute your microphone, okay, okay, 
So can somebody tell us what is a prayer and what is an invocation? Try. Yes. And those who have just joined, I've said if you can afford, put your mic, your video on, if you can afford. Especially if you are using Wi-Fi, uh, you will not, you are advantage. So if you can, just put your video on so that we interact with the people I can see other than just the names. But if not, you are still okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Smith, Smith Kangede, are you there? Smith Kangede? Yes. Yes. Do you, can you try, what is a prayer? Just what do you understand by a prayer? Prayer is talking to God. It is? Talking to God. Yeah, talking to God, very good. Do you, do you what is an invocation? Do you have a clue of what an invocation is? No. Okay, Franklin Munene. Franklin Munene. Franklin, are you there? I'm an gadget to go on. Ah, good, I can see you are there. Franklin, yes, do you know what an invocation is? Uh, I have a clue. Okay, try. Uh, there are short chants that are directed to God. They are what? Short chants that are directed to God. Short, there's a word I'm not getting. Short what? Chants. Chants. Yes. Okay, short. Okay. So anyway, you've tried. So people, uh, a prayer, of course, is a form of communication with God addressing God and invocations maybe let me just uh, invocation is a shortened form of prayer just as uh, my friend has said uh, an invocation in a sh is a shortened form of prayer okay so when uh, prayers are made in the African society who do you think these prayers were addressed to who do you think prayers are addressed to David, I hope your hand is up or it is just the machine which you have put on continuously. David, are you ready yes. to talk? Yes. Who are prayers addressed to? They were either addressed to the spirits. Yes. Or, or the supreme being that the community believed in. Yeah, that is God or the ancestors. So this are uh, that. So can we, let's just write the following. Let's write the following say that uh, prayers and invocations uh, just note that they are the they were the most common for they are the most common acts of worship that prayers in the african society that is prayers and invocations are the most common acts of worship they are the most common acts of worship then say that prayers are addressed to God, prayers are addressed to God, and they are done through spirits and ancestors. Prayers are addressed to God through the spirits and ancestors. So you, you pray to the ancestors, you pray to the go to or to the spirits but at the same time you are addressing to you are addressing god it's just like um we, we pray to god but through jesus christ so there was that connection for them okay so the prayers were addressed to god but they were addressed through the spirits and ancestors okay then another aspect of prayer in the African society say, praying is a continuous activity. Praying is a continuous activity done anywhere and at any time. It is a continuous form of activity done anywhere and at any time. Okay. 
Then another aspect of prayer is that prayers are offered to God. Prayers are offered to God while lying down. Prayers are offered to God while lying down, facing a particular direction, kneeling, or standing. Prayers are offered to God while lying down, facing a particular direction, kneeling, or standing. Okay, then just add, add that uh, invocation, invocations, of course we have said invocations are just short forms of prayer. They are said at any time, they are said at any time as need arises. They are said at any time as need arises. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Shorten, yeah. I mean, they are said at any time as need. Department, yes. Okay, so they let's. Are okay, I was checking who could be talking, so it's okay. Now, um, that is that about prayer in the African society. So, Remember, as we describe forms of worship, we are asking ourselves what, who, how, when. So here we are saying that prayers and invocations are the most form. For, they were, I mean, they were. It is the most common form of worship. And now, if we were to compare this with the with with Christianity now, um, tell me in the for Christians, when do we pray? When do we pray for Christians? When do we, do we pray? Yes, yes. Your hand is up. I keep forgetting. Just you have not put your name. I've forgotten your name again. Just that is. I'm talking to you. your hand is up. Not not David. Yes, it is just written. Take no. Yes, I'm talking Obwaso. to. Yes, Obwaso. Obwaso, sorry. Obwaso, I'll not forget that again. Obwaso. When yes. do Christians pray Obwaso? Christians, they mostly pray due, uh, during trouble, like during the corona pandemic. Yes, that is one. During trouble. Yes. Another time, Marcus, when do Christians pray? <laughs> Marcus? <laughs> Eh? Is it just when you are in trouble? Yes. When? Pardon? When? When is? I can't hear you clearly. Okay. Uh, David. David. Oh, a hand. Number two. Number two. Hand is up. Whatever that means. Okay. Yes. During yes. meals. Before meals, yes. Which other time? Which other time? There are morning prayers and afternoon and evening prayers. Okay, so okay, you are answering the question why and when it is okay. So then in we which is which posture should you take when you are praying? Which postures do Christians take when praying? You can either pray when one, raising one, hands, raising hands, yes, kneeling, kneeling, lying down. Like, are there some of you who prayed while lying down before you woke up in the morning? When you Beach. realize that God has woken you up, did you sit up Beach. or you just prayed while you were sleeping? Now, yes, what is the danger of praying in most cases when you are lying down in bed? Yes, you fall asleep. You start praying and you see, in the evening you say amen in the morning when you wake up. 
Okay. <laughs> which which one which one do you think is the best poster to pray to show seriousness to God if as much as possible? Kneeling. 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 Other than kneeling. Lying down. Raising the hands. Raising the hands together. Raising the hands or putting the hands together. Well standing. Now we very good. And if there is a time you need to pray, young men, it is now. We really need to pray day in, day out, so that God intervenes in the situation which we are in. There are many people who are sick. There are many people who are dying. The economy is ailing. We need prayers. And if you have never prayed in your life seriously. This is the time to pray. Oh, so we were talking about in the African society. So I think we are through with that. Let's go to the other form of worship. Song and dance. Unless you have a question, song and dance. So mute Victor Munene. Mute Victor Shukrani. Mute your microphone. Obwaso. Also mute your microphone, please. Okay. So song and dance. Um... When do you think the Africans sang and danced? And who did they sing to? Yes. Seth, Kabiru. Seth, Kabiru. Yes, please mute your microphones. Yes. Hmm? When? I cannot hear you, Seth. Just raise your voice. I think you could be experiencing some net problem. I can't speak. Okay, thank you for what you said, although I've not heard. Yes, somebody else. Your hand is up. Somebody's hand is up. Number two. Yes. Victor Munene. Dance mostly during others. Festivals saying thank you yeah. to God for that's oh, what oh. harvest. Okay, thank you very much. During harvest, when they were <laughs> singing and praising God for having made them have a good harvest, let's write the following. Number one. Uh, so say uh, the the traditional African communities. Traditional African communities worship God through song and dance in their religious gatherings. In their religious gatherings. Ayuko. Okay. Let me please mute your microphones. Who is this? Chalo. Chalo. Chalo, mute your microphone. <laughs> Abdi Eno. Abdi Eno. Let me see whether I can mute all. <laughs> I can't. Okay. So let's proceed. I'm saying that uh, African communities worship through song and dance in their religious gatherings, then say people are involved both physically and spiritually in worship. I repeat, people are involved both physically and spiritually in worship. So as they sing and dance, there's the physical and the spiritual involvement. Then, uh, say the songs the songs are often in praise of God the songs are often in praise of God and bring the community together the songs are often in praise of God and bring the community together The songs are often in praise of God and bring the community together. Now, is there any one of you who has ever, who has ever,
who has ever participated in a traditional ceremony, a, a traditional worship ceremony, an African traditional worship yeah. ceremony. Me, Mitch, Mitch, you have ever attended one ceremony? Mm -hmm. Hey, no, 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 no. Hey, we don't do that. It's only that maybe you have clicked your hand is up. Somebody who has ever had an experience? Yes. Yes, where are you? Who are you? Talk. Unmute and talk. Somebody? Okay, so anyway, we are saying that in the traditional setup, they worship in, it involved all people, they dance, they sang, and in most cases, it was in praise of God. Or there could be songs which are seeking uh, for help. I remember as a child, very, very remotely, it must have been in the 1960s. There's a time there was no rain in our region for so long, and I don't answer Kuriza, which region. And I remember there was a dance which was organized to try and appease, to appease God, to ask for rain. And I remember the whole community was there, children, women, men, and people were dancing. And it was a dance to make, uh, uh, to make people, I mean, to appease God, uh, to bring rain. So that is what the Africans believe. So, these days, of course, some of we, don't, we, we believe in a living God, and of course, we don't believe in the traditional uh, setup or uh, beliefs. Remember, we are doing this for comparison purposes, but there are those who still believe in their African culture. Now, maybe at the coast, do we have a friend from the coast? At Uambie, do we have some of the setups in the traditional setup there is a council a very strong council of elders at the coast in aitwa nini wazewa unmute can you unmute yourselves or are, are you able to unmute yourselves obwaso yes uh somebody wazewa at the coast kuna yes Sean. wazewa have you ever heard about Waze Wakaya? Somebody from, somebody mm. from the coast here, Ukoapi Utuambie. Waze Wakaya, and they are normally very active during the political times. Uh, they, they crown leaders as elders of that community. Or among the Meru. Among the Meru, Kuna, Juri? Eh? Juri? So anyway, there are communities where some of these issues are still active, but of course we are talking about song and dance and what the Africans did. So let's move. The next form of worship is blessings and salutations. Blessings and salutations. Blessings and salutations. Maybe let's start from the Christian perspective before we go to the Africans. Which are some of the salutations and blessings that Christians make in the current society, in the Christian community. Elijah, Elijah, some of the, the present salutations and blessings. When we say, hey, there are many for Christians. One, dear God. Eh? Fear God. Okay, or somebody else. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom, which means peace. peace. Another salutation or greeting or blessing. Jehovah. Jehovah. Jehovah, no. That is just God. You You have not said much. Yes? What about God bless you. you. Praise yeah. God. Peace be with you. God is yeah. good. Yes. All those are aspects of salutations and blessings. May the peace of God, just a short statement about um, asking for blessings or even praising God. So under this, uh, say the following, that God is worshipped through salutations and blessings. God is worshipped through salutations and blessings. God is worshipped through salutations and blessings. Then say, 
Salutations and blessings. Salutations and blessings are expressed in greetings and farewells. Salutations and blessings are expressed in greetings and farewells. For example, praise God. For example, praise God. God be with you. May God bless you. Of course, this is said in, in the specific context. So salutations are expressed in greetings and farewells. For example, praise God. God be with you. May God bless you. Like in the African society, uh, they used to, I mean, uh, as a form of blessing, the elderly women used to tell the young girls, may God bless you with many children. Would you accept such a, a greeting or such a blessing now? May God bless you with many children. Would you accept such a blessing? No. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Would you pray for in your life? Obuaso kila mtu anipe namba ya watoto in what you project for? God willing. How many? <laughs> How many could you ask God to bless you with? As many as possible. <laughs> Obwaso, how many? Football team. Thank you. Thank you. How many? Send away their children. How many, Shukran? Chamit is lying, Cha. Zero. You don't want? Clinton? Yes. Three. How many would you pray God blesses you with? Like three. 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 Or three. Has. Sean. Boy. Sean. Boy. Sean. Yes. How many would you pray for? I know I'm ambushing you because for now that is not in your strategic plan, or you are not really thinking about it. It is many years to come. But anyway, we are saying in the African society. The more children you had, the more it was believed you were blessed. And of course, the average number you would get as many as possible, 10, 12, 13. And of course, the more children you had, the more labor you had, the more respect you got. And for Africans, it was a blessing. And that's why uh, maybe as a form of a salutation or a blessing, you would be told, may God bless you with children. May your family grow and spread like the pumpkin. Okay, the pumpkin plant, it spreads and there are so many which grow. So anyway, those are blessings and salutations. Remember, this yeah, question was to. asking to describe the traditional African ways of worshipping God. Now, other than sacrifices, offerings, prayers and invocations, songs and dance, blessings and salutations, there are two aspects we want to look at. Write this subtitle, Places of Worship places of worship, right? This, I want us to conclude so that we go to the other question. Places of worship. And you realize, uh, as you write that, when we were discussing uh, the form of worship in the wilderness, during the time of the Exodus, you note that other than mentioning the forms of worship, we also discussed the places of worship. So, because as you worship, you worship at a particular place. So, let's discuss this. So, let's write the following. Yes, right? Or even before we write, can you give me examples of places of worship in the traditional African society? The ones you can remember. Asa. Shrine. Tinabu. Yes, shrine. Edwin. Edwin. Edwin? Okay. Mountains. Asa? Yes. Mountains. Yes. Mountains. Mountain places. Temples. Uh, yes. Akim. Akim. Opon. Philemon, can you mute, please? Akim Opon. Edwin, please mute. And Asa, mute your microphones. Mwalili. Elias. Mute your microphones. Okay, so the places of worship, mountains, caves, and the rest. Write the following. Write the following. 
So uh, we are saying that worship in traditional African religion was done formally, sorry, places of worship, okay. Worship of God in traditional African religion was done formally, formally, especially during communal prayers. Worship in traditional African religion is done formally, is done formally. That is, there was a system in place, especially during communal prayers. Communal prayers, of course, when people came together, and of course, they would determine where this would be uh, done. Then uh, write and say, the places of worship are known as shrines. The places of worship are known as shrines. The places of worship are known as shrines. They include, they include caves. They include caves. They include caves, waterfalls, mountains, rocks, and riverbanks. They include caves, waterfalls, mountains, rocks, and riverbanks. Riverbanks. Then, uh, then say, the shrines, the shrines have altars where sacrifices were offered. The shrines have altars where sacrifices were offered. The shrines have altars where sacrifices were offered. Then also say that honoring of sacred places, honoring of sacred places, Edwin, Edwin, yes. kindly mute your microphone. Mute your microphone. Honoring of sacred places and the involvement of religious leaders are normally taken as ways of worship. Honoring of sacred places and involvement of religious leaders are normally taken as a way of worship. They are taken as a way of worship. Okay, so when you attended to these places of worship, when you went there, that was a form of worship and when you brought in the religious leaders. Okay, the last bit of the describing the traditional African way of worship, write another subtitle, write religious leaders, religious leaders, religious leaders. So in the traditional African setup, say the religious leaders include prophets or seers. The religious leaders include prophets or seers, priests, elders, diviners, and medicine men. The religious leaders include um, prophets or seers, priests, elders, diviners, and medicine men. Mitch, you have a question. Your hand is up, or it is just a, a mistake. Okay. So, so uh, what is the difference? Maybe let's see. What is the difference between, uh, because we looked, what we call these people, we discussed this in Form 1. What, in our Form 1 topic, what, are, what, what is one name given to all these people we have mentioned? The, other than them being religious leaders, we discussed them when we were looking at, when we were discussing which topic? Yes, Clinton. Oh the specialist in african religion heritage yes the specialist very good when we were discussing and i'm happy i can see marcus looking at his notes so that is good david your hand was up david i wanted, I yeah i wanted, wanted to say the same 
I wanted okay. to say the same. Okay. Now, David, can you tell us the difference between a, 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 a prophet and a diviner? Can you remember the difference between a prophet and a diviner? Because they had different roles as much as all of them are religious leaders. Who is a, a, a diviner prophet. and who is a prophet? Yes. Deals with spiritual matters, predict spiritual matters. Yes. While a, while a diviner yes. uh, predicts yes. what is going to happen naturally, natural phenomena like rain, yeah, drought, something like mm -hmm. that. Okay, Umejaribu, somebody else. I'm happy I'm seeing you checking your notes. The difference between a diviner and a prophet. Of course, a prophet predicts what is going to happen. An example of a prophet in the traditional African society, who is known, who predicted and things came to be? Jehovah Wanyonyi. Who? Jehovah Wanyonyi. Ali predict nini? Wewe. What did Masaku. he predict? Eh? Masaku predicted what? The coming of? The railway. Railway. Okay, it came. Then, in the Kikuyu community, somebody, the one who predicted that people will come, people who are, the, whose skins are very white. Okay, so those are examples anyway. So, who is a diviner on the other hand? A diviner, the main difference is that a diviner mainly is a, a specialist who consults with the spirit world. Of course, it, it has to do with God, but of course, uh, th there is a, a difference. And in your notes, as you revise, be sure or know the distinct roles of each of these. The prophet uh, or the seer, the priest. The priest was mainly involved in what? The priest? Victor Njenga. The priest was mainly involved in... Victor, or you have just arrived, yes, Subwaso? To conduct the religious priest. duties. Yeah, conduct religious duties, like like doing what? Like ceremonies. Offering sacrifices. Offering sacrifices, very good. So let's finish then. We are writing, let's continue with the writing, say, these are highly respected people. These are highly respected people who preside over religious functions. These are highly respected people who preside over religious functions. These are highly respected people who preside over religious functions. Then, uh, who preside over religious functions. Then write another factor, say, they act as intermediaries they act as intermediaries between the living and the invisible or spiritual world. They act as intermediaries between the living and the invisible or spiritual world or spiritual world. Okay, then the last statement, right? Brixton Degua. Brixton Degua. Brixton Degua. Can you unmute? Are you there? Brixton. <laughs> okay, so write this last sentence. Say, most communities believe that God is not to be pestered. Most communities believe that God is not to be pestered and therefore most communities believe that God is not to be pestered and therefore go through their religious leaders to relay their requests to him. Most communities believe that God is not to be pestered and therefore they go through their religious leaders to relay their request to him. Most African communities believe that God is not to be pestered and therefore they go through their religious leaders 
to relay their requests to him. So these religious leaders are the ones who used to make most of the requests. They believed God is not supposed to be disturbed. Hey, for us Christians, do we also believe the same? That God is not supposed to be disturbed, so we should go through the pastor, the bishop. No. Do we believe no. the same, Christians? No. no. Which verse in the Bible shows that we should not, we, should, we can go direct to God? Give me a verse in the Bible which shows that we have that freedom to go to directly to God anytime, any place, and in whichever honorable manner. Avas, you are Bible scholars. Mad. Yes, Clinton? Where the Bible says? Oh, make your request known to him. And? I don't know the other part. Oh, it, that is, uh, I think it is Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, I think around yeah. there, which is, you should not be anxious about anything, yes. okay? So you should make known your request to God with supplication like that. Yes. So you, you should not be anxious. Or, David, David, you have a verse which says? So it's not a verse. I would like you okay. to repeat the, the point. The point, the last point. Yes, I'm up to go through. The, what, the question I'm asking. No, the point yes. that we read before you asked the question. Okay, I said most yes. communities believe that God is not to be pestered and therefore they go through their religious leaders to relay their requests to him. To relay their requests to him. I've got it. Yes, you. You're, you're okay, you are okay. So who wants to contribute maybe? A verse which shows that we, we, we don't tire God. Anytime, anywhere, we can pray to him. And like the Africans who believe, I will stay in Kuchosha Mungu Sana, when they, you pray through the leaders. Another verse? Matthew, Matthew, is it Matthew 11 verse 28, which says, come to me, all you are weary and are heavy, Lady, Glad come to me, for all, I will give you rest. All. So anyone, anytime, then during the, the death of Jesus on the cross, remember the curtain, uh, okay, yes, very good, somebody is already giving a verse uh, electronically, let me read this, uh, this chart in Asema, Matthew 27, verse 15, which says, where the temple curtain was torn, giving a leeway to all people. Thank you very much. Uh, it is the same point I wanted to give, that when the curtain in the temple was torn during the death of Jesus, the door was opened. You know, initially it is the priests who used to be mediators, but Christ is our mediator and we can go to God through. I mean, we can access God without any hindrance. Remember, we are learning African heritage and also making comparisons with Christianity. So we are through with the forms of worship. Okay, very good. Any question up to that point? Good. Now, I want us to discuss the next question is this. Uh, write, write this question or this area. Remember, we are doing revision of what we have already done, but we are having insights and some additions here and there. Write this question. Explain the factors. Explain the factors. Sean, Sean, we are writing this question. Explain the factors that have interfered with the traditional African way of worship. Explain the factors that have interfered with the traditional African way of worship. Explain the factors that have interfered with the traditional African way of worship. With the African way of worship. Okay, so we have looked at the African way of worship, sacrifices, offerings, songs, 
invocations, blessings, the places of worship, the religious leaders, all that. I'm still at Brixton Degwa. Are you there? Brixton? Yes. Yes. Ah, very good, very good. I just wanted to see whether you are there. Okay, because I had only responded. Okay, now, can you give some factors which you think? Because this is, by the way, actually a very common question. In, in African traditional religion, when the questions are being asked, whatever aspect of the African traditional religion you discuss, normally you, you are supposed to look around and see especially when dealing with continuity and change. Is it still happening? If not, what is happening? And if so, why the change? What has made uh, things different in the African society? Okay, so what do you think in your own understanding, looking at the forms of worship, ways of worship, where we worship or they used to worship, what has brought about the change? What has interfered? Number one, what has interfered with the form of worship? Try. What has made things different? Yeah. False prophets. False prophets. Remember, we are looking at it in the African context. We are looking at the African traditional way of worship, how they offered sacrifices, how they, uh, they sang, where they worshipped, how they danced, what has interfered such that we, we don't have that situation on the ground now in some aspects. What has Coming changed? Up. Yes, that's what I want to. Victor, you want to try? Yes, there? The coming of the missionaries. Yes, explain. They when they came, what did they do? It's okay. They taught us you know. the, how the Bible tells us. Yes. So it is the aspect of Christianity. We have embraced Christianity, and of course, we don't follow those traditional uh, beliefs because we believe God. Jehovah or the creator of heaven and earth is the supreme and not what we been or the way in which we believed in the specific gods in various communities. Somebody's hand was up. Was it Alvin? Alvin? Other than Christianity? So Christianity condemns. In fact, write that as the first point as we progress. Christianity condemns African ways of worship. Christianity condemns African ways of worship, such as offering animal sacrifices. Christianity condemns African ways of worship, such as offering animal sacrifices. Christianity condemns African ways of worship, such as offering sacrifices. Why do, Afri why do Christians condemn Afri animal sacrifice? Brixton, I can see now you are on video. I can see you. For sure you are in for the lesson. Yes. Why? Why are why is Christianity against animal sacrifice? Because because uh, they we believe that Jesus was the last blood. Yes, Jesus paid it all. On the cross, Jesus said it is finished. So there is no other sacrifice which is more important than that of Christ. Okay, other than what Christians believe or the Christianity, yes, any other factor which has made things different or which has interfered? For example, Africans used to worship in the forest. What has changed? What has happened? Or in the caves, what has happened? Comment about forests. These days, there's a lot of what? The cutting down of trees is called what? Deforestation. 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 Okay, Deforestation. Right Very good. Write that as a second point. Say, deforestation. Deforestation has destroyed some African shrines. Deforestation has destroyed some African shrines, very good. 
And I can see Seth has also made a point uh, on the chart. Uh, he has said, okay, finish the deforestation point first. Deforestation has destroyed some African shrines. So by the way, you, you are free to chat on the wall and maybe give some points. Seth has said, introduction of Western education that has led to the disposal of some stereotypical beliefs. Yes. Uh, Seth, can you just explain, please? Uh, just give an example. You are correct. The introduction of West, Western education. You are right. Seth, do you want to add to explain further? OK. Seth. Yes. You want to add? Yeah, so that is also another point. I know it will come up as we talk about science, but you are correct. So put down the following points. Number three, to say private, pri, private, eh, privatization, private, <laughs> private, eh, privatization, okay, from the one private of land, privatization of land has led to the destruction of communal places of worship. Privatization of land has led to the destruction of communal places of worship, such as shrines, such as shrines. So you can imagine if there were shrines in places like Nairobi, maybe Machakos, all those places, you know now, there, there's a new form of land ownership, whereby land has been privatized. In the traditional setup, land was communally owned. There was land which, I mean, the, all the land belonged to the community. Various clans were just given portions, and there was land which was set aside for communal purposes, uh, grazing, worship. But now you realize it has reverted to private ownership. So even places which had these shrines have been destroyed, they are not there. Then another point, uh, modern education. Now that is where we are, my friend uh, had given. Modern education views traditional ways of worship as barbaric. Modern education views traditional ways of worship as barbaric while some view the traditional priests as witches. Modern education views traditional ways of worship as barbaric, while some view the traditional priests as, uh, the priests as witches. Okay, so uh, it is what, uh, okay. I don't know, Alvin, whether this is a comment or uh, you are just wondering. We uh, will come to it. He, he has said some people depend on witchcraft for solutions. Okay, we'll be looking at that. Let's just uh, finish this point. Now, we are saying with, uh, okay, let me ask you, in case you have a problem, genuinely, okay, most of you or all of us uh, maybe are in Christianity. And of course, that aspect, we know that we should be worshiping a true, we should be worshiping Yahweh who made heaven and earth, according to Genesis. Uh, but I wonder whether if you have a challenge, you have a headache, and there's a medicine man or a healer or a seer in the neighborhood, would you go to see this person to help you? Okay, in the present society, these people are presented in uh, adverts like Usha Wai Kuona, an advert imeandiko Muganga Hatari Kutoka. Muganga Hodari Kutoka. Kitui. Tanzania. Tanzania. Na uwa anaponya magonjwa yote. Lakini uwa hawa Muganga Hodari sasa wanaponya corona. Eh. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, those are the things which they focus on. Kuna wengine hata uponya hasira. Sawa, sasa. We are saying the way Christians, for you, as a person who has been to school, 
you've gone through the education system. How do you view this Waganga Hadari? I mean, this Waganga Hodari. They have solutions to all problems. They can make you begin uh, umepoteza kazi, ukona shida ya mapenzi. Okay, what is your take from your understanding of issues maybe in psychology? You as an educated person, would you go to this Waganga Hodari kutoka Tanzania? No. Ama kutoka no. Kitui? Yes. No, no really. Yes. Eh? Oh. Okay, it depends. Know. Now, the education, I'm sure the education you are going through has changed your perception and you may not go to it. So education, that is how education interferes. Okay, so somebody who is this set Seth is explaining here that my explanation on that point is that due to the discoveries on how rain is formed, contrasting to the belief that that of the sacrifices of animal led to the falling of rain. Okay, sorry. Okay, so she, he's trying to explain the aspect of science. And of course, it is just the next point which we are going to write. Now, somebody had commented that some people depend on Sorry, some people depend, I just wanted to see the chat. Some people, some people depend on witchcraft for solutions. Yes, there are people who depend on witchcraft for solutions, but we are saying that as much as there are people who depend on it, currently in the current situation, there are people who don't. For example, people who believe in the Bible cannot visit a witch doctor because you believe who is the solution to all our problems? God. God, God. Okay. Jesus Christ. But there are people who turn to that. Right? The, the next point is this. Right? Modern science and technology. Modern science and technology has answered most of life's problems. Modern science and technology has answered most of life's problems. Hence, some people do not worship the traditional. Oh, I mean, do not worship the traditional God. Modern science and technology has answered most of life's problems, and some people do not worship God, or they don't believe in that, in the God that we are talking about in the traditional setup. So, uh, for example, instead of us saying that, uh, I mean, for example, now with the, very, the coronavirus around, Science is explaining very well that it is a virus. By the way, e virus in the top of Abi. What are the stories? E virus in the top of Abi. Only the eh? It came from China. Is it something which occurred naturally? There are people who have not muted their microphone. Or is it was it made in a, in a lab somewhere? What is the story? In a lab. In a lab. In a lab. There is one scientist from Man Japan made. who is so convinced. It is something which was in the papers. He say he was saying he's so convinced this thing is man-made. Of course, I'm not uh, categorically saying authoritatively. It was just a discussion, and he was saying, no matter how long it takes, he'll be proved that this virus was man-made because the way natural viruses occur or pandemics, they tend to affect just some regions because of the climatic differences. But for him, he's so convinced that the fact that this is a virus which is affecting everybody everywhere in the world, he suspects or he fears that it could be man-made. And of course, I'm not saying that was a discussion which was going on. So anyway, for us, we are giving a scientific explanation now. But if it was in the traditional setup, maybe we would say, the ancestors are not happy or God has, it would have some traditional explanation. So the last point, the last point, rural to urban migration has made it difficult. Rural to urban migration has made it difficult for people to worship with members of their own community. Rural to urban migration has made it difficult for people to worship with members of their community Hence, people convert to other religions. Rural to urban migration. 
rural to urban migration has made it difficult for people to worship with members of their own community. Hence, people convert to other religions. Hence, people convert to other religions. Okay, so there's a last question which I want us to do here. Okay, okay, just to wind up this subtopic. Okay, write this unless you, okay. We have already discussed what I thought we should. So the last question, because we have about 20 minutes, uh, write this question. What are the traditional African ways what are the traditional African ways? What are the traditional African ways of venerating? What are the traditional African ways of venerating and communicating and with the spirits and the ancestors? What are the traditional African ways of ways? Hey, hey, somebody please, can you mute all your microphones, please? What are the traditional African ways of venerating and communicating with the spirits and the ancestors? Okay, so the word venerate maybe is what we need to discuss first. What is to venerate? Venerate somebody? Brixton, your hand is up? Or you are moving your hand? Yes, somebody. David, David, is your hand up? Yes. Yes, what is venerate. to venerate? Venerate is to honor or worship. Very good. To honor or to worship. So let's write. Venerating, veneration means showing respect. Showing respect to somebody or something considered important. Venerate means showing respect to somebody or something considered important. Somebody or something considered important. So we are here, therefore we are saying, generally speaking, how are spirits shown respect? How are they venerated? How are they communicated with. Uh, because of time, let's just write these options. Number one. Uh, okay. In the first case, just write spirits and ancestors are venerated because they are believed to be senior to human beings. Spirits and ancestors are venerated or they are shown respect They are shown, I mean, they are venerated because they are believed to be senior to human beings. So they are created by God, but they are senior in hierarchy. You remember the hierarchy of being? The hierarchy yes. of being? You remember? Yes. 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 Let me see. Victor Njoroge. Victor Njoroge, uko. Unmute, yes. Victor, uko. Yes. Okay, Victor. Able to be a hierarchy of beings, to anzie Jew. God, then next. God, divinity, yes. spirit, yes. living yes. beings, human beings, uh -huh. plants uh -huh. and animals, and uh -huh. things. Very good, very good. Thank you, Victor. So, those are then the hierarchy of beings. So you see in the hierarchy of beings, the spirits and ancestors are up and they are regarded as senior and they need to be respected or venerated. So these are the reasons, I mean, uh, another, so how are they? So number one, these are the ways in which they are venerated. Number one, sacrifices. Sacrifices are made to spirits and the ancestors Sacrifices are made to spirits and ancestors so as to keep good relations with them. So as sacrifices are made to spirits and ancestors so as to keep good relations with them. So as to keep good relations.
so uh, so that they can have good relations with them. Number the next one, the next point, pouring libations, pouring libations on a daily basis, pouring libations on a daily basis. So that aspect of pouring food or whatever drink to the ground on a daily basis, that's a way of showing respect to them. Then another form is the spirits and ancestors are invited to participate in social functions. The spirits and ancestors are invited to participate in social functions since they are considered to be part of the community. The spirits and ancestors are invited to participate in social functions since they are considered part of the community. Since they are considered part of the community. They are invited to participate in social functions since they are considered part of the community. Okay. So give me some of the functions where they are invited. Yes? Circumcision rituals. Circumcision rituals, another one. Marriage. Marriage ceremonies, what else? Harvest. During harvest time, yes, when they are singing or uh, offering sacrifices, what, or even to participate. As they do the harvest, they believe the spirits guide them. Yes, which other function, David? Naming ceremony. Yeah? Death ceremonies. Yeah, death, death ceremonies, ceremonies, naming ceremonies, wedding ceremonies. Okay. Uh, there's a chart here which I want to see what one has said. Uh, wedding and handing over the dead into the spirit world. Thank you very much. That is from Collins. Okay, so thank you. Okay, another one, uh, another point. Uh, contact between ancestors and the community. That is another way of showing reverence or uh, veneration. Say, contact between ancestors and the community is maintained through con consulting diviners, mediums, and medicine people. So here, the major way is consulting. So I've said contact between the ancestors and the community is maintained through consultation. You consulting, so the key word is through consulting diviners, mediums, and medicine people. And of course, we've already seen this specialist. So consultation. So when you are doing, when you are consulting them, you are venerating, you are honoring, or you are showing respect. Then another way in which uh, the, they are venerated is people name newborn babies after the ancestors. People name the newborn babies after the ancestors as a way of keeping them alive in the community. People name newborn babies after the ancestors as a way of keeping them alive in the community. As a way of keeping them alive in the community. As a way of keeping them alive in the community. Then another way is they are also venerated through mentioning or calling their names in prayer. They are also venerated through mentioning or calling of their names through prayer. So their names, the, the names of these ancestors, uh, they are called or they are called upon through prayer. Then another point, the graves of the dead are maintained. The graves of the dead are maintained as a way of showing respect. <clears throat> the, gra <clears throat> the graves of the dead are maintained as a way of showing respect to the ancestors. The graves, so where the, the people are buried, these graves are treated, uh, they are maintained. They are maintained, which are some of the ways these days people honor places where people are buried. 
how are graves or places where people are buried, how are they respected? Yes? How is respect shown to places where people have been buried? In the current community? Hmm? Yes? In some communities, what is it that is done? They are buried facing a certain direction. Okay, buried facing a given direction. Yes. For example, in Mount, uh, the people who believe, okay, in the Kikuyu community, it is believed that anybody who is buried, the head should be buried facing. Facing Mount Kenya. Mount Kenya. <laughs> yes, facing Mount Kenya because. It is believed that that is where God lives. And of course, the spirits, you, you make them happy. So anyway, these days, you realize that some people cement the graves. They make uh, some kind of, I don't want to call it a monument, but they, they, they it is, uh, okay, there are some families where they have chosen specific places, some a specific corner where people are buried. And you find that that corner cannot be, People maybe don't play from that point. They don't just sit there. They cement the graves. Or, you, or if you know that somebody has been buried uh, at a given point, you don't, you don't just walk over that place. So those are examples. Okay, let's finish because I can see maybe some people have a challenge. Some people are leaving, others are joining. Just to finish, uh, but we have a few minutes. We have five minutes or 10. Uh, then another point, uh, giving, giving the dead a proper burial ceremony. Giving the dead a proper burial ceremony is a show of respect. Giving people a proper burial ceremony is a show of respect. Then another way of venerating the ancestors is taking care of ancestral land, taking care of ancestral land so that it is, uh, it is not maybe sold out or it is uh, uh, taken care of in terms of uh, not being degraded or just cut the trees carelessly. Then another way of showing respect is the living honor the wishes of the ancestors. The living honor the wishes of the ancestors. Whatever the ancestors had requested to be done, they honor that. And finally, finally, taking care of sacred places, taking care of sacred places, taking care of sacred places which are believed to be dwelling places of the spirits. Taking care of sacred places which are believed to be dwelling places of the spirits. Okay, good. So with that, my dear students, I believe or I imagine we have thoroughly revised the first topic in African heritage. And the topic which we have been going through is the African concept of God, spirits, and ancestors. And in our first bit, we, or through questions and answers, we discussed what is the concept? What do Africans believe about God? What do they believe about spirits? What do they believe about ancestors? Then, what is the role of these ancestors? What is the role of God? What is the role of spirits? We looked at all that. Then now we looked at the responsibilities of human beings or of the living towards all the three. That is what we have been discussing. And finally, we have concluded with the form of worship, which is the form of worship. How was God worshipped? And of course, through the spirits and the ancestors, which we have also just been looking at. And finally, what has changed? Why have things changed in the current society? And we have looked at all those factors and we have concluded with the form of veneration. So 
we are through with the first subtopic of African heritage. Any question or comment? Because we have two minutes. Any question or comment? Any muna nyamaza tu ivo muna niangalia? Muonge? The lesson was good. Eh? Mutumoja muonge? The lesson was good. The Brixton, what are you saying? We used to invite a... Brixton, yes. Raise your voice. In the case where they use the ancestors to the celebrations, how did they... You did hear what? Please raise your volume. Yes. How did they know that the ancestors of the that, that the ancestors of spirits were in the celebration which they were invited? To? That the ancestors were in the celebration. Which they were yes. Invited to, was there any sign or? How they were in the celebration, how they were invited. How they used to know that they have accepted the invitation or the in the celebration. Oh, okay, okay. So he's wondering how the, the people used to know that they have accepted the invitation or they were happy now. For the Africans, they believed that whenever the ancestors are not happy they used to bring misfortunes or they would appear to people through visions to talk to them. So if they have carried out a ceremony and all is well and there is no reaction, there is no revelation, they believe that whatever they did was right. Okay? So if they did not come back to complain or bring misfortune, they believed then they, they, they have accepted. Okay, very good. Yes, another one? Another comment? Okay, Seth has uh, posted. Thank you for the good lesson. God bless you. Somebody else, uh, David Gashema, the lesson was nice. So thank you so much, students. So I'm happy and I'm glad you, you have tuned in, you've stuck, you've contributed. Even those who I could not see uh, on video, of course, you are there, you are still there, and you are, I picked on you uh, randomly, and you were able to talk. So, God willing, next time, we will go to the next subtopic. Remember, we are revising African heritage, and the interesting thing with African heritage, most of the, I mean, sometimes some of the information which is tested may not necessarily be what we've covered in class, so you need to read more. And some of the aspects we are covering them through questions and answers that we are discussing, looking at some of the questions which have been set in previous exams. So next lesson, we are going to move to the next subtopic where we will be discussing the meaning of life and its wholeness in the traditional African society the meaning of life and its wholeness in the traditional African society. So we'll be discussing things like what is a community, what is kinship, uh, mutual responsibility, and all those aspects. So that is what we'll be discussing next time. So uh, to make the lesson uh, interactive, make sure you read. Just read ahead because we'll just be tackling questions on that subtopic. So with that, friends, I'm happy that you participated. I, I'm just looking at maybe a comment which somebody has made. And somebody has said, Edwin has said, thank you for your time. I'm also happy for also creating time to come. So God bless you so much. Continue taking care of yourself. Keep in touch with your book. Keep yourself busy and you will keep the devil at bay. Somebody is saying, David Gashema, can we have a word of prayer? Gashema, now that you have proposed, can you pray for us before we leave? Pray. Yes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we come before you this morning. We thank you for the nice lesson you have had. We continue asking you, God, to continue protecting us at this time of difficulty. It is a time that is worth your mercy. Without you, God, we cannot, uh, cannot endure this journey. 
we ask you lord to continue uh, sailing in us sailing with us through this uh, sea of trouble and tribulation and throughout the day we ask for your grace upon us and in the entire uh, mang fraternity including the students and the parents may you continue blessing us so that we may continue having a uh, a good interaction and cooperation in all the lessons and uh, make them productive for us. And at the end of it all, we are going to thank you, Lord. We also ask you to give us uh, the cure for this pandemic. It's only from you, Lord, that the final word shall come. And we pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Amen. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, thank you, Gashema, for that powerful prayer. God bless you so much. And as you pray, let me just check on the wall. Uh, there was a student in Form 1 West, uh, a student in Form 1 West who has lost the mother. Let me see the name. So that in your prayers, you remember this young man. Um, let me see. A student by the name Patrick Onyango in One West. He lost the mother on Monday. So kindly, as you pray, pray for him because it is a very, very difficult uh, moment for them, for him and the family. Uh, so, and God will always provide that comfort and consolation. There's power in prayer. So, Thank you for that. Uh, for I mean, at least I just wanted to bring that to your attention. So, Kwaheri Nibasi, God bless you till we meet again. Bye. Same. I can comfort it with the question. Bye. 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 See you then. Bye.